want to share something with you and just minister to you briefly in the spirit. And uh, I felt that there was an angelic presence here tonight in a special way. And the Lord has come to minister to us. <clears throat> but uh, I want us to look in our Bibles at Exodus chapter 19. And I want to speak to you in the Holy Ghost right now. Exodus 19, 23. We'll, we'll go back to 21. Exodus 19, 21. And I'm by far not the first person to preach this message, and I'm not really going to preach tonight. But I want to, I just want to minister as the Holy Ghost has said to you, and I want to reaffirm. And for the first time, some of you affirm to you what happens when we're in the presence of God and how to get deeper into God and how to connect with Him in a deeper way in, in, a, in difficult seasons that we're in. And uh, Exodus 19, 21 through 24, and the Lord spake unto Moses, go, and, and the Lord said unto Moses, go down and charge, charge the people, lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to the Lord, sanctify themselves, lest the Lord break forth upon them. And Moses said unto the Lord, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for thou chargest us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And the Lord said unto him, Away, get thee down, and thou shalt come up, thou and Aaron with thee. But let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto the Lord, lest he break forth upon them. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. I just want to encourage you tonight that the thing that we need the most right now is the moving of the supernatural in our lives. And this is the evidence here that we're feeling right now that the Lord has taken over the service. Uh, and we're experiencing it. But the Lord has said in the Old Testament, if you break through, I'll break forth. And in the Old Testament, that meant my presence will kill you. Wow. That's what the Old Testament meant. Because our God is a consuming fire. And the presence of the Lord was not something that could be experienced in the Old Testament the way we experience it. Except by a few privileged people, the high priests. Moses was allowed to experience the immediate presence of God. David was. A few others, but not for most people. But now we are here in the New Testament, and the presence of God is the same, except that because of Calvary, it's been made available to us. The principle is the same. If we break through, he will break forth. It's the same principle, except that now... <laughs> When we feel and experience the presence of God, it doesn't kill us. Because God has made a way through Calvary for the Spirit to be poured out and the Comforter to come. And we just celebrated that on the day of Pentecost. But what you need to understand, what I need to understand, is that we have to press into the kingdom of God. Jesus said, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. This was a reference to the change that was happening there was a change in time and a change that was coming for the end of the Old Testament, the old will and covenant of God to his people, and the new will and covenant, which is the last will and testament, which is the New Testament, and that we would need to push into it. And so there is a certain amount, and I promise you this, you will not experience the kingdom of God in its greatness, and you might even lose out with God if you don't learn how to push into it. Because one of the passages that uses the words of Jesus said, every man presses into it. Okay? It's the will of God for people to push their way into the kingdom of God. It's also an understanding in that scripture that some people will try to force their way into the kingdom of God. You can't force your way into the kingdom of God without the spirit of God. You've got to be allowed in through the work of Calvary. But after the work of Calvary... God expects us to desire Him and to press into His kingdom and to press through the difficulties of life into His presence. Amen. God is continually on the move. It isn't that 
you need to understand that God is not blessing you and then running off and saying, come find me, ready or not, here I come, and, and trying trying to play hide and seek. God's not trying to do that. But God has got things to do, and he expects us to go with him, to move with him. And so if you want to make it in these last and evil days, you've got to push your way in. You've got to press your way in. This is not about doing good works to gain the favor of God. It's about praying and fasting and calling on the name of the Lord. And with desire entering into the kingdom of God. There's got to be a desire. We can never, ever lose that basic, primal desire within us for the presence of God. It needs to get more and more. It needs to be multiplied. At all ages, the desire for the presence of God, young and old, 40 years ago, you received the Holy Ghost. Great. You should hunger for Him more. It should feel better, as the song says, sweeter as the days go by. And, 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 and you should feel like that other song says, I wouldn't take anything for my journey now. The older some people get, the more the more uh, distance they are from their own salvation, the outpouring of the Spirit that came on them, a lot of times they begin to devalue their salvation and begin to take it for granted. But it, it is the desire of God that we break through. Yes. Because Jesus took away all the fences around Mount Sinai. Amen? Amen. When he cried out, uh, and then when he rose again, that veil was rent, uh, and all the fences are gone. Hallelujah. And so we... We are free to break through into the presence of God. But it does take some effort on our part. And that effort is faith. God's not going to come down and impress us with the faith to believe in Him. We have to give that to Him. That's the only thing that we can give to Him. And when we give Him faith, He gives us the Word of God. A preacher will tell us the truth. The Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? A preacher's going to come and tell you the truth that you need to repent and God's going to show you how to repent. You can be baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. And then you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Speaking with tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance. This is the scriptural plan of how we initially break through. But there is a continual breaking through that we must do to press and to push our way in. Because there's a faith, there's a world that's trying to press their way in through false means. And we're trying to press our way in through honest and pure means. There's got to be a hunger within you for God. And it needs to get more and more. More and more and more. Brother, and, and, and you say, well, I don't feel that. I don't sense it. You know, the more you eat something, the more your desires for that thing will change. If you, if you go to McDonald's and finish out every day with fries and Twinkies, after a while your body's going to crave McDonald's and fries and Twinkies. It will take a while. And you might go through a time where you're just sick of it, but after a while, it will be what your body wants because you have trained it. It isn't because McDonald's is sitting in their science lab going, hee hee hee, we're going to get them all addicted to our food. That isn't real, okay? It's because your body desires donuts if you keep eating donuts. A few years ago, Brother Arcovio was here, and he said because of his, I think it was because of his heart, or maybe it was his GI tract, but he had some kind of a physical ailment. And his doctor put him on a Mediterranean diet, which was heavy on fish uh, and light on uh, meat. And, of course, you know the rest of the Mediterranean diet. There's some rice and there's this and there's a lot of olive oil and uh, fresh cheeses, etc. And he said, I didn't like it at first because I didn't really care for fish. But after about six months, I don't want anything else. This is the nature of walking with God. And you may think, well... I don't want to be as spiritual as you, you are, Pastor. Let me tell you something. Everybody's going to have to get more spiritual the way things are going. Right. We've got to understand that we're going to be walking around like the Shunammite woman or the widow who had nothing to eat and the barrel of oil and the, 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 the barrel of meal and the cruise of oil did not fail. God is able to do supernatural things, but only for those that really, really want Him. Only for those that are really willing to pray. And walk around with authority say, in the name of Jesus, I command this thing to happen. In the name of Jesus, I've done my best. I've given to the kingdom of God. I'm part of your financial plan. I now command in the name of Jesus that there be money for me to pay my bills. If you do your part and you make wise decisions and are part of God's financial plan, 
then you have the power to push your way into the kingdom of God and boldly come before the throne of grace. That's breaking through. Yeah. Boldly come before the throne of grace. The Bible tells us to do that. I'm not talking about name and claim it. I'm talking about things that you need. Trust in the Lord. Yes. The only way we're going to make it through these times, because I, if, it, it, it just looks every day. Every day it looks more and more like prophecy. And uh, even if this is not the exact end, we're close to the end. And the only way anybody ever got through these seasons was by truly trusting in God and by breaking through. And God will always break forth if you break through. He will never fail to do that. And when he breaks forth, it's going to be like the Old Testament because he broke forth, people would die. People would say, their kids would get close to the fence and mom would come and grab them because they knew the presence of the Lord. If they got beyond the bounds around Mount Sinai, the presence of the Lord was on that mountain. And the glory of God, the, the Shekinah, the immediate glory of God was on that mountain. And it was going to kill those babies if they got close to it. But now... It's, it happens in the same way, but it doesn't kill us. It gives us power. And you need to crave that. You need to change your desires. And instead of just relying on God and saying, God, I want you to change my desires, you have to do some part of it. This is why this teaching, and I'm, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to continue on with this for two more lessons because it's very important that we get control of our minds and our feelings and understand that the Word of God gives us a pattern and a formula for how we get control of our minds and our feelings. And I'm going to teach one more lesson next week, one lesson next week, and then after camp, I'm going to teach the last lesson. But if you understand that there is a burning desire within you for God when you wake up in the morning, halfway through the day, and as you end the day, there's a desire for the presence of the Lord. There's never a time in your life when you can't just pray just like that. There's never a situation at work where you can't just take your coworker aside and say, we're going to pray right now. You, you don't have to get fired to do it. You don't have to make a big show. Okay? I understand. You're, you're in a business place, but you wait until the time is right and go pray with somebody. There's never a season in your house when you can't gather your family together and pray. That You don't, do not have to wait for the church. You do not have to call the pastor, and sometimes you might need to. But you do not have to do these things. You have the power of God within you. And you begin to push and to break through that fence and say, I'm getting past that fence. Get me to Mount Sinai. Get me to the presence of God. I'm pushing in with violence. I'm desiring. Amen. I want the things of God. I want the things of God. I'm desirous for the things of God. And people are, people will see that. And when the supernatural begins to flow in your life and my life, then the magnetic, it's like an electromagnet. Okay? You know that the electromagnet has no power Amen. until the electricity is turned on. Amen. And then it begins to draw. And when that electricity is turned on within you, the power of the Holy Ghost, then people are drawn to you. And you have the authority and power. Let's praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good things Amen. have happened tonight. Good things have happened tonight. Thank praise Jesus. the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Praise the Lord. Brother James, I feel like the Lord impressed me a few minutes ago. And yes, we can do it. Can you raise your hand? Okay. All right, well. Brother James, I felt like I need to impress you to stand up and encourage the people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They said I don't need to be here. They all the time. Amen. So I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. <laughs> and now that one was caught up there. <laughs> but you know, we serve a mighty God. We serve a right now God. Yes. See, when we call on God, He ain't a yesterday God. He ain't a tomorrow God. He is a right now God. And if I ain't there, He will walk by. And it, I'm standing here, he's going on. He would not wait for me because he's moving. And I have to get in line and move with him. He is a moving God right now, God. Some people say, well, I think God will. No, I know he will. Because his word says so. Therefore, I'm going to move yeah. with God. He said, I'm healed. I'm not going to say, I'm sick. I'm going to get one day. I am healed in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm God. It may not be manifested, but right now, but I, I'm looking at Jesus, and Jesus is this whatever you yeah. come and heal me yeah. to bring the manifestation. That's what yeah. I'm going to believe in now. Yes. 
I will believe that he has brought me through now. I believe it now. Not tomorrow. Now. I didn't do it yesterday. I believe it now. Oh, Lord God, I thank you. I thank you. Jesus. 